CompTIA A plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 5.7. Given a scenario, troubleshoot problems with wired and wireless networks. This video will cover troubleshooting issues related to networking. For each of the common symptoms listed in the CompTIA A plus Core 1 Exam Objective 5.7, I will provide some basic information and possible root causes. Additionally, as a pro test taking tip, you should always perform verifications, inspections, or checks before performing any repairs or component replacements. Troubleshooting networking issues is crucial to maintain a reliable internet connection and ensure seamless communication between devices. One common symptom users may encounter is limited connectivity, which can manifest as the internet connection being down or displaying a message stating no internet access. When faced with limited connectivity, several potential issues could be causing the problem. One common troubleshooting step that can be used to isolate the root cause is to check whether the device is obtained in a PIPA address. A PIPA addresses are self-assigned IP addresses that devices generate when they fail to obtain an IP address from a DHCP server. If the device has an APIPA address, it indicates a problem with the DHCP server or the device's network configuration. Another troubleshooting step involves testing connectivity by trying to communicate with a remote device or IP address. After ruling out software-based causes, you can move on to physical causes. These include items like faulty network cables and connections. Slow network speeds is another potential networking issue. When addressing slow network speeds, several factors must be considered to pinpoint the root cause and implement effective solutions. First off, interface configurations, particularly speed and duplex settings, can significantly affect network performance. Incorrectly configured speed and duplex settings may lead to data packet loss or transmission errors, resulting in slow network speeds. Users should ensure that network interface cards and switches are configured to match the network's requirements for optimal performance. Damaged cables or poor connections can also contribute to slow network speeds. Inspecting cables for signs of wear and tear and securely connecting them to network devices can help mitigate this issue. Network congestion occurs when the volume of data traffic exceeds the network's capacity, leading to packet loss and slower transmission speeds. Identifying and addressing congestion points, such as overloaded switches or routers, can help alleviate slow network speeds. Malware infections on network devices can degrade network performance by consuming bandwidth or launching denial-of-service attacks. Regularly updating antivirus software and conducting network security audits can help detect and remove malware, ensuring optimal network performance. Regardless of the underlying issue, it will often speed up the troubleshooting process if you determine the scope of the slow network issue. This involves assessing whether the issue exists on a single device, a specific grouping of devices, or the entire network. Next, we have port flapping. Port flapping refers to a network issue where a port on a network device, such as a switch or router, rapidly alternates between the up and down states. This continuous fluctuation between up and down states, which is essentially the interface turning on and off, disrupts network connectivity. Port flapping typically occurs due to problems with the physical connection, such as a faulty cable or connector, or issues with the network interface card. External interference, such as electromagnetic interference, or EMI, poses a significant threat to the stability and reliability of wired networks. EMI can originate from various sources, including fluorescent lights, power cables, generators, and nearby signals emitted by other electronic devices. When cables are exposed to EMI, it can disrupt the transmission of data signals, leading to packet loss and overall network performance degradation. To mitigate the impact of EMI on wired networks, 
It is essential to implement proper shielding and grounding techniques for network cables. Shielded cables help deflect electromagnetic fields, preventing them from interfering with the data signals. Additionally, ensuring that network cables are routed away from power cables and other potential sources of interference can further minimize the risk of EMI-induced disruptions. In wireless network environments, EMI can present unique challenges, particularly in settings where multiple access points are deployed to facilitate wireless connectivity for users. Interference from external sources, such as microwave ovens, cordless telephones, and neighboring Wi-Fi signals, can significantly disrupt wireless communication. This interference can lead to intermittent connectivity issues, slow data transfer rates, and overall poor network performance. To address EMI-related problems in wireless networks, several strategies can be employed. One approach is to carefully select Wi-Fi channels that are less susceptible to interference from neighboring networks and other electronic devices. Additionally, investing in Wi-Fi equipment that incorporates advanced interference mitigation technologies can help minimize the impact of EMI on network performance. These technologies may include signal filtering mechanisms or adaptive channel selection algorithms, which work together to optimize signal quality and reliability in the presence of external interference. Intermittent wireless connectivity, a prevalent issue in wireless networks, can stem from various factors. Alongside the electromagnetic interference we previously discussed, physical obstructions like walls, furniture, or other obstacles can weaken wireless signals, leading to signal loss or degradation. Additionally, the distance between a client device and an access point can exacerbate signal attenuation. Moreover, faulty hardware, such as network interface cards or access points, can compound intermittent wireless connectivity problems. If hardware components are malfunctioning or outdated, they may struggle to establish a stable connection or maintain consistent signal strength. Latency, in simple terms, refers to the time it takes for data to travel from one point to another in a network and is often measured in milliseconds. This can also be thought of as the delay between sending a message and receiving a response. Several factors can contribute to latency issues. Firstly, the physical distance between devices has a direct impact on latency. Understandably, the farther apart two devices are, the longer it takes for data to travel between them. Additionally, network congestion, resulting from excessive traffic, can lead to delays or even loss of data packets, thereby increasing latency. Then there is external influences like EMI. Just about anything you can think of that would slow down network speeds would increase latency, as these two properties are inverses of each other. Therefore, addressing latency issues often involves optimizing network configurations or upgrading hardware, as these actions increase overall network speeds. Jitter in simple terms refers to the variation in delay or the latency of data in a network. Both latency and jitter are metrics that can be used to measure network performance, but unlike latency, which measures the overall time it takes for data to travel from one point to another. Jitter focuses on the inconsistency or fluctuations in the arrival time of data packets. Stated another way, latency represents the average delay between sending a packet and receiving a response, while jitter indicates how much this delay varies over time. Lastly, we have poor voice over IP quality. This issue is rather self-explanatory and can significantly impact communication clarity and effectiveness. Voice over IP operates by transmitting voice data over the internet in real time, making it more sensitive to latency and jitter compared to other types of network traffic. Both latency and jitter can cause audio disruptions, such as audio breaking up or voice distortion, making it difficult to understand the other party during a voice over IP call. Since voice over IP relies on real-time transmission, even slight delays or fluctuations in packet arrival times can result in noticeable audio quality degradation. 
High latency can lead to delays in audio transmission, causing conversations to feel disjointed or out of sync. Similarly, excessive jitter can cause packets to arrive out of order or with inconsistent timing, resulting in audio distortion or dropouts. Addressing poor voice over IP quality involves optimizing network configurations to minimize latency and jitter. This may include prioritizing voice over IP traffic over other data types. Additionally, upgrading network hardware and software, such as routers and switches, can help improve the reliability and stability of voice over IP connections. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.